Hello all you lovely ladies and gentlemen out there, this is Azacraft, and this will be my first actual let's play of Sins of the Solar Empire. So, you're going to get started here, and I'm going to go with a medium, random medium map, just so we can have a fairly standard game, without getting into any of the set options. Speaking of options, I've got everything set to normal. I'm going to turn the pirates off because I know you don't want to see me having to bushwhack the pirates or sit on the pirate bidding screen the entire time. In uh, later games I'll probably turn this on, but for now we're going to keep it off just because I'm like that. Deal with it, this is my video, so I'll go I will turn Capital Victory on because that'll just make it that much quicker for me to deal with. And Blowing up the capital ships or getting military advantages, I think a legitimate way to win. Now then, I'm... I, there are several factions to pick from. The TEC are the Trader Emergency Coalition. They were set up from the Trade Order after several hundred, well, several thousand years of peace, after they got invaded and had to fight back. So this is what became of them. However, as the war went on, they eventually, they eventually split between the TEC Loyalists, who were mainly organized around defense and letting the enemy wear themselves down before they launch a counterattack, and the TEC Rebels, who are the offensive let's go crush all the aliens guys. Of these two, I prefer to play as the Rebels, but that's just me. Then there's the Advent, who long ago were banished from their homeworld by the Trade Order for being heretics and schismatics and for doing ang evil things that nobody likes. They were kind of ticked off about that, so they built up a fleet, and then later they returned. However, as the war went on, they split between the Loyalists, who are, we will avenge our ancestors and crush the TEC for what they did to us, and the Advent Rebels, who are like, yo guys, something's not right here. There's some corruption inside our organization that we must purge. I don't really have a preference toward either of these, it just depends on the mood I'm in. And last there are the Vasari, who used to have an awesome empire around the core of the galaxy until they unleashed uh, something. We don't know what it is yet, it'll probably be in some of the Vasari Empire 2. But it was unleashed, it destroyed their empire, and they've been on the run ever since. This running led them to the trade order, and when they attacked, they pretty much crushed everything in their way until the TEC was organized and they were able to fight back. And they are split between the Loyalists, who believe that they've been sitting around here for too long, and that they have to go before the ancient enemy catches up with them, and the Rebels, who believe that they should unite with the Advent and the Terra, with the Advent and the TEC, to fight back, to take a stand against this ancient enemy, or to bring them along with them. Now, considering the type of game we're playing, I'm going to choose the well, I could pick any. I could pick the TEC, I could pick the Advent, I could pick the Vasari. In this game, I am going to pick the Vasari Loyalists. Now, I'm not going to set up any teams. I'm going to keep the other factions random, for, just for the kick of it. However, I'm going to set them all to hard difficulty, because I know you want to see me squirm with them. This will be a free-for-all, four-player map, 36 planets. Let's begin, shall we? As some other backstory, this is set 30 years into the war, so really long time. But as mentioned before, I'm playing with the Stellar Phenomena and Forbidden Worlds DLC, which will give us some extra things to explore, and who knows, maybe we'll find some space ponies along the way. We've just got to be we've just got to begin, wait for it to load, and then we are all set to go. And here we are, the Vasari, the glorious homeworld Eos, which I will rename as a craft because, oh, right, got hit enter, which I will rename as a craft because I'm totally not an egotist. Now we start with two scout ships, one capital ship factory, two frigate factories. The scouts I'm going to go send out to auto explore the solar system, see what there is out there. Capital ship. I'm going to make a Jarosol Evacuator, which is the standard colonizer capital ship to build. And I'm doing this because the Jakara Navigator 
which is the scout, has the ability to capture resource extractors on its own. And as you can see, in the frigate factory, I've chosen to make the Ravastra Skirmisher, which is the default combat frigate. At this point, we just have to wait for that to be built. Then the colonists and the war can begin. We found an astro. As you can see, we've begun to explore some of the systems surrounding ours. We've got a volcanic planet, which we'll need to research volcanic exploitation, occupation, sorry, to research. And an asteroid, which we won't have to research anything. Volcano planets generally have a lot of metal. Ice planets have a lot of crystal. And the rest are somewhat more varied than what you can usually find there. Though, asteroids usually aren't that plentiful, but that's just the nature of being asteroids and not actual planets. Have discovered a colonizable planet. See, we've got a dwarf planet there, two metal, one crystal. The journey begins at and we finished our capital ship Freddy over here. Freddy. Oops. You can get a look at that. Basically, it's just a giant egg. We're going... We can give it this one squadron of strike craft. We're going to give it a fighter. Because there won't be anything in early game we need bombers for. We're going to give it the colonization ability to colonize things with. I'm also going to turn auto cast off because if I don't, then when it jumps into a gravel, it will immediately go for the planet. Which can be annoying, especially when you still have siege frigates fight ready to fight you in planetary militias. Scouts have discovered a colonizable planet. And we have finished our ship production. Just in time for us to find some more planets, a shattered moon, which you can't colonize, and an ast another asteroid. Now then, we are going to ready the fleet. I need orders. Our time is short. And with this, we will go into tactics management and create a fleet. Now leave the fleet. Why? Uh, never mind. Forget the fleet. We're going to go to Daedalus. And we're going to take it over for the glory of our empire. It shouldn't be much of a challenge. In the early game, there's mostly planetary militias. And the less valuable the planet is, the smaller the militia there is. So there's nothing that should pose a challenge to our military at this point in time. In the future, things can get problematic. Especially if the TEC happens to bring up insurrections. Which are annoying, to say the least. Left but as you can see, we've shown up, and they have a Siege Frigate and a Cobalt Light Frigate, which is the st the TEC standard combat ship. You also have an Ocean World here, which you can see has a lot of ships. They've got six Cobalts, three Missile cru missile Frigates, three Flak Frigates, which are anti-fighter defenses, two, co two Heavy Cruisers, and two Siege Frigates. So they're going to run away, and I can't blame them for that. Scouts have discovered a colonizable There's a Terran world that is really valuable, and we'll have to go for that pretty quickly. But let's watch a bit of the fight that's going on. As I've commented before on my last video, the, set, the, gra the sound isn't that amazing, but the graphics are not bad. I might get a graphics mod at some point, but I haven't really considered it. So yeah, it, it's just a matter of us beating down this last ship and we can colonize this world and get on with bigger and better things. For example, we found another ocean world. That's fun. So at some point we're going to have to definitely... Well, we finished the militia here, so we're going to colonize the planet now and take it for our own. As I was saying, we're going to have to research uh, Oceanic Occupation eventually, so we can take those over. But for now, we can simply leave it be and focus on capturing this stuff. Which is fairly important. Have a and we have an ice planet, which is nice. Not amazing, but it's nice. And we have finished here. So, we've colonized an asteroid. Now, as you can see, there are several options you can pick from. There's civilian infrastructure. There's emergency facilities, which increase the survivability of your planets. There's exploring the planet, which re reveals hidden things. Then there's logistics, tactical, which increase the amount of stuff you can build around your planet. And there's specializations to focus your planet towards certain things. 
So here I'm going to build civilian infrastructure, which has varying levels depending on uh, how long it takes to get to max population. And I'm going to explore the planet so we can see what's on it, because once in a while you can find artifacts. Now at the same time we're going to build extractors so we can begin getting resources from those worlds. And we're going to build a weapons facility so we can begin researching for well, so we can begin researching weapons technology. Meanwhile, our fleet's gonna head off to this dwarf planet to take it over. And as it turns out, the sun is a neutron star, which is annoying, heavily annoying, because if we go around that star, we're gonna get damage. Damage is not good. Fortunately, we can ignore the star most of the time. That won't be too much of an issue. But for our early exploring uh, frigates, it can be annoying. Off we go. Meanwhile, let's look at some of the techs we have. We've got the prototype tech tree. Oh, we found an enemy. Oh, that's the pirate base. Pirate base, not a fun place. Do not go there. But yes, uh, prototypes, that's where you'll find most of your ship designs, as well as abilities for those ships. Assault is where you'll find weapons upgrades, like buffs for your weapons. And support is where you'll find buffs for your defenses. Fortifications is based on planetary defenses, obviously. And it seems we've lost uh, we lost the exploration ship attacking the pirate base. Surprise, surprise. Our fleet has engaged the enemy. We have engaged the enemy here. It's just a matter of shooting them lots. They, but this doesn't have any more defenses than the asteroid did, so it's a fairly easy bet as to who's going to win. Fortification is based around planetary defenses. And then there's Empire, with nanotechnology, which is based around, like, trade and resource, resource extraction and that sort of thing. Phase Mastery, which involves phase-based technologies, such as uh, going through wormholes and detecting movements along in phase space. Let me investigate. And then there's Oppression, which mostly involves colonization. Manipulation, meanwhile, involves diplomacy. That's basically the diplomacy tree. Has not found anything. Uh, fleet logistics. This is where we can get more commanders to build up our sh build up our military. Well, to build up the amount of capital ships we have, and this one on the bottom is so we can build up our fleet. Now we've finished cleaning up the planetary defenses here. We will colonize that planet. Then these, this is artifacts. These are things you can find, but they won't be revealed until you find them. And if somebody else finds an artifact, we'll all know it. We just won't know what the artifact is, thus giving us an incentive to go take it for ourselves. And that's how it works. Anyway, I'm going to begin researching to the missile cruiser as well as the Titan, because that will be important later on. We've colonized this planet now. So once again, civilian infrastructure, and as you can see, this one has two levels, making it somewhat more valuable than an asteroid because more population means more taxes. And we're going to explore this planet too. As well, we'll build the extractors, but and here I'm going to build an imperial lab so we can begin research into the civilian side of the tech tree. I'm going to throw some money into a well. Just give the word. Then we're going to send them off to go attack there, which is to be expected, and that'll probably be an easy fight as well. At this point, it's just a matter of waiting for our tech to finish, for our ships to go places. Fun times. Finished. Good. Build a new scout vessel. As you can see, we have a little intruder, a scout from the advent. A seeker vessel, which is annoying. Not that it'll be a problem, it's just annoying. But, since it has been brought up, let's see who our foes are. As here we can see the relationship screen, kind of like civilizations, as it were. And here's me. The lines indicate the status of relationships. And our foes. We have the Prophets of Zaya, who are, I think, they're the Advent, 
They're the admin rebels. So, they're the admin rebels. They won't be fun. These, the Golan Rim Union, who are the TEC loyalists. And while they have an inclination towards us, they kind of hate our guts because they're loyalists. Then we have the Reseda. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Those guys. And they are not on our side. They're the TEC loyalists, I think. They won't be fun to deal with either. So we're continuing to batten down our enemies. Eventually we'll get to fake face those guys, and that'll be difficult. We'll have to build up more to take them on. And I have this unpleasant habit of bunching all my fleets up into one massive doom fleet to crush them. But that's how it works. And you can expect fun from planetary mines, stuff like that. Things that make your life miserable. Titans, like the one that I'm building. Well, I will be building it once I research it all the way. Until you research the four techs, you can't research the Titan, which was introduced in this expansion, actually, Rebellion. Our capital ship, as you can tell by the shiny, shiny light, has leveled up. And while they colonize that asteroid, we'll look over to... Uh, they can level up to 10, and each level will give you new abilities. They can give you new strike craft as well. So we're going to go for the Gravity Warhead. I generally don't upgrade colonize past the first level because I don't see it actually doing much for me besides increasing the range and duration, and I'm not sure how that actually helps me. Oh, right. It gives us extra construction forgets. That's not as valuable as some of its other capabilities. So, I don't feel bad about skipping out on that. I'm going to build another Imperial Lab here because the Vasari have some interesting tech in that once you get to a certain point, well, once you get up to there anyway, then your capital ships can act as tech trees, as a tech labs. Which is really valuable since you don't have to build them anymore. But if you lose a capital ship, then, well, you're kind of screwed. On the other hand, though, that does take a while to get to. So, we're going to have to hold off on that for now. But, on the other hand, I also researched it because that means we can colonize ice worlds. Colonize ice and fire planets. We can get the tech for that. Which is significantly valuable when we have a fire, a volcano world right there. So... Based on that, we're going to go send our ships around to go prepare to attack that, just in case. We're going to research phase space monitoring, so if somebody starts jumping along one of these phase lo these lines here, these phase lanes, which is how they get around an FTL, we'll know about it. Eventually, at the end of the tree, we'll reach a point where we can see all the techs at the same time, well, like every phase movement in the galaxy. Pretty impressive, no? I mean, I think it's impressive, but I don't think the others can match that. You can see them from a couple planets away, but not the entire galaxy itself. Exploitable resource discovered. Oh, we found something in one of our worlds. On Giro, uh, we have found a Raider's Outpost, which will give us an extra 20% metal extraction rate and an extra constructor, which means we can build stuff faster. Now, this is a uh, useful because it means that we can build stuff faster, more metal. And this is not an artifact, this is just something you randomly find on your worlds. And there are plenty of buffs Structure like this. Complete. Which I think are pretty useful in the grand scheme of things. I need orders. Now then, once our capital ship gets there, on dude. Once our capital ship gets there, we will head off to Tyrion, and that is where everything will happen. Where everything will happen. We have found the advent. Oh, we found another thing. That can happen too. Which, we have found frequent raiders. Which is kind of not ironic, kind of makes sense. But that's beside the point. As it stands, we'll now lose 30% of our trade income at this planet. Well, this planet will generate 30% less trade income, which means trade is not as valuable there because of the raiders. Scouts have discovered 
a colonizable planet. And the other things, we will begin full Terran lockdown, which will increase the population on my Terran planets. Planet. And we'll begin Arctic occupation just for when we get to that point. Till then, though, we're going to have to keep growing. Just give the word. And by growing, I mean we're going to go to Tyrion, eliminate the militia there, and have, then we'll colonize that planet. And that's probably where I'm going to end this episode. We'll have a nice base of understanding. We'll have a good counter to the fact that our enemies are kind of blobbing out of control, growing out of control, and then really advanced. Well, not so advanced, but to a point where it's annoying. As you can see, they've got purge vessels already, which is somewhat worrying. We'll also put money into resource sublimation, which will increase the amount of metal and crystal that I can extract across my entire empire. Extremely useful is when you get down to the uh, credit crunch. Scouts well, the resource crunch, as it were. Planet. We can see that, thanks to our scout, we now know that these guys have a Revelation-class battle finished. cruiser. Which is annoying, but it's not undefeatable. I can't actually remember what type the revelation is. I guess we'll find out when I do my advent playthrough or when we fight it. But I think it's a planetary bombardment ship. Don't quote me on that. Scouts are annoying. I will be building up planetary defenses later to counter those as well as any other threats that arise. But for the moment, we just gotta deal with this. Phase jump initiated. Our phase jump is beginning. We can now go off to Preparing defeat our enemies. Phase jump. As you can see, phase space is a nice shade of orange ish yellow. They used to be all blue, but they changed it that at some point. Uh TEC is blue, and I think well TEC is more like a green, Advent is like blue, I think. It's either a blue or a purple. But now the battle begins. I'm gonna see. Give cinematic mode a shot, as you can see. It takes all the nitty gritty lines and stuff out of the way. And instead, it just gives us the chance to see people shoot things with pretty lasers. Which is what all you are actually here for. Of course, this is going to be a lot harder than the game before, because as you see, they've got three crows, three siege frigates, three uh, flak frigates, two missile cruisers. They had three of these light frigates, but I kind of blew at least one of those up. But this is the first real contest, because my own ships are taking damage too, and I'm going to have to replace them. And each loss is important, because they need more resources that you can't spend on things. But we're just nearly game losses are to, be, are to be expected. And as long as we don't lose a capital ship, we'll be fine. Boom goes another ship. As you can see, we are winning, though we are t sustaining some damage. The uh, siege frigates seem to be pulling up. We managed to get rid of all their general combat frigates. Now and it's just a matter of cleaning out the rest. There goes one of our ships. So, I'm going to toggle cinematic mode back on just so I can handle this. And, uh, build another combat ship. You know, as you can see, the market for metals crashed. That means somebody has been buying a lot of, well, dumping a lot of metal onto the market. Don't know why, but that's what they be doing. On the other hand, they're down to three siege frigates, two missile frigates, and we're currently dealing with those handily. Once we get rid of the missile frigates, the siege frigates will be relatively easy because they're made for, you know, seizing planets, finished. not shooting things. Standing by. We finish our production. We're going to bring in our the replacements for the ships that we lost. I don't like the design aesthetic. You can kind of see how 
TEC ships are like... Oh, we lost one of our, another one of our ships. I'll get, make another one of those. But yes, the TEC ships, you can see how they were potentially civilian vessels before they became this, because that's the whole design aesthetic. Most of the, the Trader Emergency Coalition ships, besides the Coal Battleship, which is their capital ship, were civilian vessels that were converted. And our capital ship has leveled up again, which I will be giving a bigger gravity warhead, which will increase the range even the range of it even further, as well as decrease their max speed and acceleration while in the range of this ability. But at this point, all the siege frigates are gone. It's just a matter of cleaning up the missile cruisers, which, as you may guess, don't do that well in close combat. Surprise, I know. I was surprised too. Standing by. Immediately. And there's one ship left. Just a matter of taking it out before it manages to blow up one of my ships. Of course, my own missile cruisers are way better because thanks to the Sari's technology, they have the ability to phase through enemy shields like they don't actually exist. Naturally, a pretty cool thing. You know? And that is the last of them. So with that, I'm going to have to wait for the antimatter to regenerate up to a level where I can activate this ability, specifically 90. And then we will end this... Well, then we will colonize this planet, and we can end this chapter. And we have found our enemies, the Golan Rim Union. They've gotten the Khan class, which is the TEC colonization class. Oh, you've got to be kidding. They're sending a purge vessel to one of my colonies. Enemy forces this is... Arrived. Uh, this is unfortunate. This is strike leader. I await your command. Scouts have discovered a colonizable. We're gonna have to send guys back to deal with that before I lose the entire planet. I need orders. Because the purge vessel is, as you may have no guessed, Absolutely. good at purging things. That's the uh, the advent bombardment vessel. Standing so we're going to have to go back and deal with that before we lose the planet. And if we don't, we're going to have to colonize the planet again. Plus that, we can colonize the planet now. So I'm going to do that. While my other ships make a mad dash for this place. Zero. Greenhouse planet. That was added by the DLC. I remember this. That was where Ferris Worlds. I can't remember if Ocean Worlds were. I think they were. Hostile fleet detected. They are coming at us hard. We're gonna have to deal with this. Research finished. Enemy That's a gamma ray burst, which is going to screw my plan up majorly. This was from the Stellar Phenomena DLC, pretty sure, because as you can tell, it's a Stellar Phenomena, which is not making things pleasant. I just can't remember what it does. I need orders, but. We have colonized the world, colonized this world, and on this less than pleasant note, I'm going to call this episode quits. Thank you to all you, thank you to everyone out there, and we'll see you in the next episode.